So welcome to another Digital Anarchy tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to go over the full process of creating a 3D logo using 3D Invigorator. And in this case, we're going to use all components of Invigorator. So we're going to use text, we're going to use Illustrator objects, and we're going to use 3D primitives. So let's uh, dive into it. The first thing to know is Invigorator works in any version of Photoshop. But we like CS4, so that's what we're using here. Uh, one great feature in CS3 and CS4 is Smart Objects, and so that's what I'm going to use. So I'm going to create a new layer, and this is just a standard transparent layer, but I'm going to convert this into a Smart Object. And what the Smart Object allows me to do is come back at any time and make edits to the filters I've applied to this. So I can save this Photoshop file, I can come back six months later, and I'll still be able to edit all this stuff anything that I've applied to the layer, any of the filters, all that stuff, I can just dive right back into it and make changes to it. So, now that we have the Smart Object layer, we're going to apply 3D Invigorator. Come down to the Filter menu, to the Axworks, and select 3D Invigorator. And I'm going to create 3D text. We're going to make a logo for Tech Fusion. Now you might think of this as some sort of company that makes some sort of fusion product, product, merging tech with something else, but no, this is tech fusion, as in confusion, which is something that I think most of us uh, have experienced at one point in time. In fact, it's probably why many of you are listening to this. But we're going to go with tech fusion. Uh, we got kind of a fancy font going on, um, and that works just fine. You can, of course, use any font that you want. Uh, we can come, you know, this is a standard text dialog box. We can come up and select from any, you know, our full font menu. Certainly no limitations there. But I like all the little curly cues, and this will kind of show off some of the things that 3D Invigorator can do. So we're going to leave that as is. Um, I've got a big space in between the two words because I'm going to drop a sphere in between there. And I'll show you that a little bit later. So, But right now, I just want a little bit of space there. And so I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And this will bring up our Tech Fusion in 3D Invigorator's 3D space. Now, something to know is that we've applied this to a transparent layer in Photoshop, which is you know just a regular layer in Photoshop. And 3D Invigorator will bring in whatever image is on the layer that you apply, apply it to. So in the case of transparent layers, of course, it brings in transparency. So if I preview this, it doesn't look too exciting right now, but you'll notice that there's a transparent, that transparent checkerboard in the background. And so I don't really want this. Um, what I want is to preview it against black because that's what it is eventually going to be against. So I can come up here to my image map checkbox and turn that off. And then what it renders against will be the background color. And in this case, it's black, which is what I want. But of course, I can change that. It's just a color chip. I can click on it and select any color. But I do want black, so we're just going to cancel that. So now if I preview it, you'll see that it renders against black. OK, so the first thing I'm going to do is apply one of our material presets to it. You can see that we've got lots and lots of different types of presets that will allow you to give all sorts of textures and finishes to 3D objects you create in Invigorator. In this case, I'm going to select one of the kind of metallic textures, and I'm going to drop that onto our text. So one of the great things about 3D Invigorator is it's really simple to use. So you've got your presets down here, and you can just drag and drop those presets onto your 3D objects. You don't have to learn any s fancy 3D stuff to, to get really cool textures on your 3D objects. So you can see that if I zoom in on this, and I think we're just going to focus on a portion of this while we set everything up, you can see that this has a really nice metallic texture. And if I render this out, you'll see all the striations and highlights. But it's a little bit, the text is a little bit kind of fat, and we don't want that. So we're going to adjust the depth and make it a little bit thinner. You can see that we're scaling the uh, 
extrusion of the text down. I'm going to set that to 9. And if I re-render that, you can see that it looks a little bit better. And we can also adjust the bevels. So you can see that right now the sides have this really smooth sort of look to them. Um, what I'm going to do is change the bevel to something with a scoop. Bevel with scoop. And what that, that does is add a kind of ridge down the middle. So you get a little bit more interesting edge work on there. And this is important. If you're going to, when you're creating 3D objects, one of the things that really makes them stand out is what the edge looks like. And so there's lots of different bevels, as you can see, to play around with and get different looks and all sorts of cool things. And you can even do really crazy things like scallop tiers and things like that. But in this case, I think a bevel with scoop is going to work just fine for us. And now we have to kind of deal with the texture because I, I don't really want a metallic. This really isn't designed to be a you know big heavy metallic object. Um, so I'm going to just use this as the base material and I'm going to make a bunch of changes to it. So I'm going to come down to my material palette and this is the texture that's applied to my object and double click on it. And this will load it into the material editor. And so now I can do some cool things. I can come in here and adjust the color. I'm going to go for a warmer kind of a golden yellow. Click OK. And if I render this out you'll see that we now have kind of a warm gold look. But again I don't really want gold at all so what I'm going to do is add in transparency. And we can do this a couple ways. We could just adjust the transparency slider and that would make the entire object just more transparent. Or we could use a material or a texture map. Now different types of maps do different things. Different attributes require different things from their texture maps. For example, reflectivity um, has to have a texture map, as you can see here. Uh, if you're going to have reflections turned on, uh, you have to give it something to reflect. That's really all reflections are, is just reflecting the environment that the object is in. If you take a chrome ball, and put it outside, it's going to be blue because it's reflecting the sky. If you bring it into a room that's been painted black, it's going to be black. If you put it into a tree, it's just it's going to be covered with leaves. And so it's just reflecting whatever the environment is that you're that you have that object in. And so for reflect reflections, you have to have a texture map. For transparency, that's not the case. So if you want something partially transparent, you would have to have a texture map. But if you want to just have the whole object transparent, you can just crank this transparency slider up and it'll do that for you. But if we use a texture map, so if we go into the Zaxworks environment and select Rip Chrome, you can see here that we have a texture map that has black on the top and the bottom. And where this is black, the object is going to be fully transparent. But then we have all these white streaks kind of running vertically in there. And the white streaks are going to make it fully opaque. And so this is a pretty cool map. So we're going to open this up and we're going to see what happens to our text. So now if I render this out, actually let's rotate this around a little bit. So we're full on. Render this out. You can see that at the top and the bottom of the text, it's now showing completely transparent. Towards the middle where the streaks are, we're now getting that gold texture coming out, but just where the streaks are. But we're also getting the gold around the edges because the edges of the text are mapped have the texture applied a little bit differently and so that's kind of giving us an outline and the cool thing about this is when we go back into Photoshop we're going to apply a glow to it and that's really gonna make this stuff pop out it's gonna look really great so so we really like this map that's a good map and as we're making adjustments we probably and this is where we want this texture so we also want to save this so we can come up to our material editor and select save material to bin and this will save it down to the material swatches so that we can reuse it later and this is going to be important because we're going to create a some other objects they're going to use a, this texture but we're going to make some slight modifications to it so that's gotten the text pretty much where we want it so now i'm going to start adding in some other elements to really just kind of flesh out the logo and bring it to our conclusion so that we can broadcast tech fusion to everybody and everybody can be confused.